I pooped in the ocean. And that's weird because it floats back up and hits you. <laughs> it's chasing me! <laughs> yeah. Oh, God! Yeah. So I'll sit here alone on my stupid purple throne. I hope you're happy. Don't think about me. Big day for you, Emin. Woo! Yeah. And the, the best way to celebrate. You ready for this? Check it out. <clears throat> Okay, look at some... Damn! I got you a cake with ramen on it to congratulate you for signing to Fueled by Ramen. Hey, hey. I didn't order any sandwiches. I I heard this is the room to get record deals in. <laughs> uh, that's not a thing. I need to hold this the whole interview. So, um, don't look at the back because Frankie actually got into it okay. on the other side. Okay, It's cool. a very patriotic cake. Red, white, and blue. It's all that they sold. Yeah. But, uh, there's where... <laughs> There's where my dog decided to uh, <laughs> go to town on it. Come here, Frankie. Come here. Come on. And actually, Hi, Frankie. come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up, up, up. There you go. Um, you can set that on the table if you want. If you really I, don't want to no, hold I the entire interview. If Frankie starts to go for it, though, I guess then then we'll see. But okay. you you met Frankie when she was a baby. You were one of the first people to meet her, actually. I met her a couple seconds after she came out of the womb. At the womb. He was yeah. actually in the delivery room. Yeah. And I was the nurse. your job before this was a dog uh, delivery, delivery nurse. Yeah. Delivery nurse. But uh, no, it was so crazy because my friend Mel and uh, Damon, they lived on the same street that you lived on. Mm -hmm. Mel specifically lived literally right next door they to you. neighbors. And then one night she was having like a, I think it was her housewarming party. Mm -hmm. And then I showed up with Frankie. I was like, let's get this thing out to a party for the first time. And then we ran into you outside. Yeah, that was that was a weird night. That was a couple days after I moved to L.A. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm coming to L.A. to do games. You play stuff. And then like my neighbor invited me over and I'm like, oh, there are like band people here. And like it was the weirdest weirdest thing in the world that like the bands and the scene that I'm in were hanging out oh, right at my neighbor's house. I think Austin was out there that night as well. Austin the Water Parks there. boys. I'll call PETA and they'll kill your dog and make a point. <laughs> wow. Fuck PETA. Yeah, and then Set It Off was there. Yeah, yeah. And then I think that might have been it, but I, it was just weird. That's I, I didn't realize that. That's so funny because you you know the bands in this scene and the music in this scene. Yes. And you're like, wait, this is happening at my neighbor's place right now? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know them personally, and I still kind of don't. But it was it was weird walking into because like, and I had to act like I didn't fully know who they were. What's your name, Austin? I mean, yeah. what's your name? <laughs> it's like Asher. I mean, Austin. <laughs> cool. What is it? Which he just as well signed a field by. Yeah. So now you guys are a part of the same family. Yeah, I I, I love that band. Yeah. Oh, they're so good, and they're such nice guys. Like talking about nice guys. Yeah. Like they are so cool, and you don't really know them too much I, right now. I only I only met him that one day, but he was wearing a mask that day, and I was like, he's pretty cool. Because mm -hmm. I wear masks to a lot of places, and I was like, I know, cool guy. Because I saw you at the uh, So What 420 event. Yeah. And you were wearing a mask there, and yes. then you uh you pulled it down as if I didn't know who you were. You were just like, I, hey, it's, I didn't know. Here we'll set this. Frankie, I already know you're gonna try once again. She loves chocolate. So Good. Because, uh, yeah. But, dude, you – so you were out here in L.A., and mm -hmm. then you uh, – obviously following games, we play stuff. And then did you go back? Did you leave L.A. for a bit? Yeah. What I, happened? I got – um, I don't know if this is a thing that everybody gets, but I got L.A. depression. And, like – It's a thing. Yeah. And I, I, it was a roommate situation, and I'm married. And, like, I don't know. I wasn't used to it, and I was having a really hard time doing it. And I have this really big, awesome, but stupid, annoying dog. Which Frankie met that night. Yeah. I remember it was like the size, Frankie was the size of his or her <laughs> paw. Yeah. I was like, whoo. Yeah. His name is Norman. He's awesome. But he loves little dogs. And there was another dog in the apartment. So I had to like confine my dogs to this little space. And I was like, I can't do this right now. Mm -hmm. it, it was a really, really hard time. So then I went back to Nashville for a bit. Is that where you're from? I'm from Miami. Okay. You're from Florida. Yeah. From Miami, Florida. Um, and then I moved to Nashville when I was 17. Oh, nice. Tommy lived out there for a couple years. Really? Yeah. Cool. I, li I lived in East Nashville. Um, and yeah, I went out. I hung out with my parents for a while. I stayed way longer than I expected. And then when I was ready, I came back. Nice. And it, it was cool because like, I don't, I don't know if anybody watching knows games you play, but it, if you're one of the people that does, um, I came back and I was like, okay, it's finally time. I'm going to, I'm going to do games you play like full to the max and it was just the right time like i started i posted a tiktok the first day it was like five hundred thousand views and the next one was like a oh million really views. yeah it just kept going and going until like the big one yeah um and it it was it was just like 
I was like, the time is right. Like, it, I needed that break, even though the break sucked. Oh, and you it was need that sometimes. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that happens to me. That's a very common occurrence in my life that I give up. Yeah. <laughs> Just for like six months. Uh huh. But sometimes you need that break. You need a little reset. Yeah. And it all ends up working out. But I got to ask about your parents. You went home, stayed with your parents. I saw a post that you, you your label announcement post. Yeah. And you, it sounds like they have been incredibly supportive yeah. of, of your Crazy. music career. Weirdly supportive. Including your dad jumping yeah. in on drums, your yeah. mom helping with like vocal stuff. So it, break down mom and dad because they sound rad. It was so weird. And if any of you guys ever meet my mom and dad or you meet my mom and dad, they will say this didn't happen, but it did. Um, I dropped They let me drop out of school. I saw you said at 14, you stopped yeah. going to high school. Yeah. Did you ever finish it or no, did, you don't even have a high school degree. No, I stopped going because they thought my band was good and I was playing drums and were like, oh, you should do games you play. I was like sick. I mean, I hated school. It was, it was straight F's. I was so similar to that. Like I didn't, and then once I started to go to school for like film stuff, I thrived cause I went to university, yeah. but it's cause I was getting to go for something I liked, but I did not study for tests. I did not do good in school. I yeah. got my parents sent me to a private school because they thought it would make me do better. No. Yeah, I had the same situation. And my parents just love changes. So, like, growing up, I li- – What a change. No more school. <laughs> in, like, 19 years, I lived in, like, 21 houses with my parents. Like, Oh, ne- wow. There was never – and, mind you, my parents were fine. And I lived – I was raised in a good house. Oh, if you guys can't see, Frankie's really trying to get this cake. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, chill. <laughs> She'll be the best interviewer dog in the coming years. Mm. She's almost a year old. So with school, like I was in and out of homeschooling and my mom was just like, you know what? If you don't want to, we don't have to. And I was like, cool. And then from then on, it was like just games we played. Like I was just doing that. I, I worked at a CrossFit gym called CrossFit Soul. Shout out to them if you guys are watching. But um, besides a CrossFit gym that I worked at, it was just games you play, and like I didn't even know how to play an instrument when I started games you play. From what I've been able to gather, it seems like you play every instrument. Like it seems like I you, do now. You, okay, so how did that come into play? Was it just how did that come into play in games we play? So somebody like the first games you play song, it's not out. Actually, it is somewhere on Bandcamp if you look for it. What's it called? It's called "Talking in My Sleep," and it's really bad. Okay, but, but it's fun. Isn't it always fun, though? Because I have some old bands, yeah. and I listen to it, and it's so bad. It's nostalgic. But it's cool to see the progress. I mean, I didn't give myself a chance to progress. So I didn't really do mm-hmm. music for long. But it's pretty cool to be able to look back and say, look yeah. what I've kind of progressed into. I don't know. Um, somebody else recorded it. Wait a second. Let me put my phone on work mode. Sorry, guys. It's my manager. He's yeah. He's got managers. He's got agents. Pete Wentz. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the times are changing. Big things are happening. Some people say big things. I just I just call it another day at work. It's just another day at work. <laughs> but um, no, like I my parents like funded my first two songs, and it was like fifteen hundred dollars. Like mm-hmm. when getting into music, like a seven hundred fifty dollars song, that's a lot of money. And like um, somebody else recorded it, and I was like, okay, I want to play a show, but I didn't have a guitar player, and I didn't know how to play guitar. <clears throat> So I learned how to play guitar for that show, um, and I was also going to church at the time and leading worship and stuff like that. So kind of as people were leaving the church, I was there, and I was just learning all the instruments while developing my love for punk rock and pop punk. Mm, that yeah. we can all three, Tommy included, we can yeah. all talk about pop punk. It's my jam. Till the day we die. Let me tell you, third time I've told this story about Tommy because you will appreciate it. Back in <laughs> 2012 is when it was, right, Tommy, or 2013? 2012, Blink-182, our favorite band. Best band of all time. They had a contest going, and it was to uh, advertise their upcoming tour. Like, they had a European tour or something. 2012? Yeah. Was and it like Neighborhoods? Uh, it was the Neighborhoods era. Okay. It would have been. But they, uh, the contest was make a video to promote our upcoming tour, and then the winner gets a lifetime supply of guest list spots. For Blink- any Blink-182 show, you can hit us up, and you get a plus one. And then so Tommy made a video for it and won! Tommy what? won, so he has a lifetime supply of Blink-182 passes to go really? to any Blink show. His video was he went out and did uh, lyrics to try to pick up girls. He had, like, hidden cameras, mm. and then he'd use Blink-182 lyrics to what try songs? to pick up girls. Uh, all of them. Yeah. There's <laughs> so many. Hey, I'm Tommy. I suck at getting girls, so today I'm going to see if Blink-182 lyrics can be used as pickup lines. Oh, Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. This world's an ugly place, but you're so beautiful to me. 
thank you. That's very sweet of you. Um, I'm engaged. <laughs> So we're in the room with a legend. Yeah, we're in yeah. the room with a freaking legend who just respectfully and humbly sits behind the camera <laughs> acting as if he's not some big deal. Yeah. But so then you started to get into pop punk. You started to get into punk rock. Blink-182 was like, at, at least I did this with Blink-182, it was an obsession. It was every single song I know the words. Me too. Yeah. No joke. Tommy too. No joke. Yeah. Like literally, like, and oh, we got to whip out the cajon and guitar when we get back upstairs and jam, because yeah. we jam Blink songs all day upstairs. Yeah, really? It's so fun. Yeah, and, it, it, and if you guys play guitar, if you guys don't play guitar, every Blink song, like, instrumentally is the same exact song. It sure is, and now yeah. anyone, any of the new bands, when it's, like, just, like, power chords and stuff, I just feel like that was Blink that allowed that yeah. kind of pop punk. Well, not they didn't create the power chord, mm -hmm. but they really helped define pop punk. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, but it was that, and it was, it was just obsession, and, like, I, as I was learning how to play drums in church, I was also, like, Learning how to play drums to the whole end of the state record, which, in my opinion, that's the best record of all time. And what a tricky drum album yeah. to learn. I mean, Travis's it's first insane. touch yeah. with a blink. I, I think it's I think it's like art, and that's like sounds dramatic for a pop punk record, but like all the drums on that record, there's nothing normal. And it's so, and it was such an introduction to who Travis Barker is. Yeah, like I was like, oh my god. And I remember Rolling Stones. It's one of the few times because they gave it a bad review when it first came out. Really, but they went back like ten years later, fifteen Perfect years record. later, and then they re-rated it. Yeah, I think they saw the impact it had, yeah. and like the fact that it. W I mean, that is one of the albums that every single song. Is a hit amazing. Team. It's incredible. So there's that album, and then there's also, and this is a little sway from the conversation, but there's also another perfect record that had the same thing that nobody liked it. It was um the Blue Album by Weezer. Oh yeah, top to bottom, uh huh, and perfect record. One thing that Weezer nails is they're so diverse. Yeah, like, they're over my entire life. I'll hear like a song on the radio and I don't realize it's Weezer. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh my god, these guys changed it up so much. Yeah, so you were jamming that too. Yeah, and it just albums like that. Like those are probably my two favorite records, Enem of the State, and then the Blue Record. The weirdest thing actually happened, and like since I, since I like, I, I had a TikTok do really well, and like that's kind of got me into meet, meeting new people. And since that, I've been meeting a, a lot of people, and I just met Mark Hoppus. Oh, I, so sick! I hung out with him, and I went to his house, and I wrote with him. No, you got to write with him. Yeah, it, that is sick. It was. The like weirdest shit of my life because nobody was with me. I, I wasn't like my, my wife was doing something. My wife, Danny, like I just went alone and Pete was there and Pete, Pete signed me. Um, Pete Wentz, by the way, everybody, he just says the first name now because they're just fr like he's just like, yeah, I was over there with Peter. And then Marcus walked into the room and we decided to write some jingles. Yeah, yeah. Pete and I have become friends. I, I love Pete. Like Pete Wentz is um, from Fallout Boy. Might have heard of him. We actually were filming a video together yesterday. Okay. And Jeez, just keep dropping the flexes here. <laughs> no, we were filming a video, and I kept flexing that he was Pete Wentz. I'm like, a oh, fallout boy. And then I was like, <laughs> while he was talking, I was like, I'm just a kid. And like well, singing band, songs that aren't him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I <laughs> love your song. The entire shoot. Um, but yeah, so, so Pete kind of arranged that for me. And it was so weird. Like, Pete was there, and I was there, and... I just couldn't fangirl. It was weird, and that's like the one person I would fangirl over. Yeah, Mark 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 Hoppus, or this isn't music. I would fangirl over Will Ferrell too. That's like a. I did see him do a live set once. Really? Like it was like a big. He oh, and he was he was doing it in characters Ron Burgundy. Really? For the entire thing, it was at the uh, um, the Greek, I think, and it was just mm. like a huge comedy show with all yeah. these like stars there. But that was so sick. I don't know. It's weird. I have a demo, and like we were singing on it together. Like he was the. Like he did the bridge, Mark. And, yeah, we were singing okay. Not Will Ferrell. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just sent it to my girl, and and she was like, "Emin, like, do you realize how crazy this is? Like, so much stuff is happening that it's hard to kind of appreciate it. But like, there's a there's a clip on my phone of of Mark and I. There's no lyrics, but like just singing together, and it's the weirdest thing. That is so. I mean, what a full circle moment for your career. Yeah, and for me, uh. I sat down with Mark for an interview once. Really? And it was so sick. because Very nice. Yeah. Oh, oh and by the way, so when I was growing up, I, I'm from Nevada. My mm -hmm. license plate, I got a custom license plate on my car, and it was BLNK182. Really? So, oh, it was, so you were that level? Yeah, fan. I was. Like, when you said, like, you were obsessed, I'm like, I was too. Like, okay, I could, cool. anything about Blink, you, me, Tommy, like, we could all literally, you have no idea okay. the conversations we could have about it. Yeah. But during my interview with Mark, it was, uh, he was doing a DJ set. 
they did a pop-up one day event of taste of chaos if you remember that tour that used to go on it was this uh it was it was kind of like a war- warp tour bands but it was a smaller version okay. and uh, i even think it was the same people i think kevin lyman may have actually created it as well cool but he was doing a dj set there so not with blink or anything i was the one interview for the day that he mm-hmm. approved of because i was with i worked for alternative press at the time okay and I gave him my license plate during the interview. Really? And then on stage when he was DJing, he hung up the license plate That's awesome. and it was up for his entire set. So I lived in Reno, Nevada before I moved to Los Angeles. And right. This was the license plate uh, that I had on my vehicle that I used to drive around with. That's crazy. And I have to bestow it to you. Do I get it for yes, real? Yes, I have one more. I always said if I was okay. to get the license plate to one person, it would be to Mark Hoppus. Okay, this is going in my studio for real. And I was just like, yeah. What? Yeah. Were you kind of weirded out talking to him? I've always been able to maintain because growing up, I always whenever there was like a show in Reno with a band I loved, I would make a point to meet them. Like mm-hmm. I was just like, I want to meet them. Yeah. And so I feel like it kind of just became something I got so used to. Mm. And the first interview I ever did was I won a local. I feel like I'm the one being interviewed. I did. A, I want to know. I did a local. Uh, the radio station in Reno where I grew up, they knew I was a huge Blink fan. Okay. So they called me on the air one day and yeah. said, "Hey, Nick." We want to give you uh, tickets to Angels and Airwaves. They're coming in. It was Damn. their first tour. Yeah. And they're like, and we also want to let you come into the studio and interview Tom. And I was like, okay. So my first interview ever was Tom with DeLong. Tom DeLong, which is like crazy to me. I didn't know I was going to do a path of, of interviews after that. Yeah. But I feel like the fact that that was my first one at 14 and I made it through. It was it was something. It was, it was a sign. Kind it of. was incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. They're, they're just the best. And then I got into like like newer pop punk kind of when I was like 16. So Water Parks was one of the first bands, and there's a record here. How old are you, by the way? I'm 21. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Whew. You're a baby. It's funny because like I've been doing this since I've been 15, and everybody's been telling me I'm a baby. So now I feel like a couple months ago, I was like, I might be getting too old for this. <laughs> You're, I'm and, not the baby anymore. <laughs> yeah. But I have a feeling you were about to say neck deep. Oh, no. I'm saying that was like one of the introductions to the first uh, – New wave of pop punk. Neck deep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's because they do something. Well, first, they do something great. And the first thing is they, they write really good songs. But also, I think they're, the, in my opinion, the band that's best at evolving and not making the same record again. Because mm-hmm. the first one, they had like that edgy 2014 pop punk where it was like, da da da. And then there was this really sad record that was like the piece in the panic. And then this beautiful record that just came out. And it's like, Wow, they are they are just trying to write the best music ever. And they're such good guys. I saw Danny just left the band, their drummer. Yeah. I saw he just stepped away to focus on his own stuff. So good for him. I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for him to embark on new things. But they were one of the first interviews I ever did. Yeah, I, I, was, I was so jealous of Danny when I went and watched them a couple years ago because my wife was at the show, and my wife air drums, but she doesn't know how to air drum. Like, I'm a drummer, but my wife is just like, like that. <laughs> and Danny thought that was funny. So like Danny kept looking at her and laughing and giving her drumsticks, and I was You're just like fuming in the corner. I was no! like, this is the hottest guy I've ever seen in my life, and he was just it was the name Danny. Yeah, it was it, yeah. My wife's name is Danny, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like in the new wave, like one of my favorite bands. Oh yeah, and now you yourself are here to potentially pave the way for pop punk, which is crazy. So what exactly happened? And I know as so many artists that I've been chatting with that have popped off during the pandemic, mm-hmm. it's TikTok. TikTok mm-hmm. has proven to be such a powerful uh, just beast in the music world. And it seems like that's yeah. what happened with you. It was kind of a, it was kind of a, a, a gift because like I've been doing games since I've been 16. And again, like I said, Blink-182 fan. It, it, and you guys know like – Blink's videos were, like, so amazing. And I don't know if you guys have seen the video, but there's a video where he's, like, going and leaving for tour, and he's, like, I'm getting ready. So he's, like, just putting a bunch of condoms on the freaking uh, – in the grocery store. Uh-huh. And I was, like, okay, I, I got to make videos. Like, I want to leave this. Leave this. Yeah. And, like, I've I've been doing it since I was six, 16. And, like, once TikTok started happening, like, I started kind of trying to do what everybody else is doing because I saw it was working. I was, like, oh, I want my band to work, but – after a while, I was just like, I'm going to do whatever I think is funny. and Which I think is a much better approach. Yeah. Honestly, just doing your own authentic stuff. And that was when I told you, like, that's when the first day it was 500 and the next day it was bigger and bigger. And, like, it was just kind of a sign that, like, this is my thing and my thing is not being like anybody else and not doing anything anybody else is doing. Just what I like. And I'm kind of applying that to everything my band is doing. Like, if I'm making merch... I don't care if other people are going to like it. I'm just doing it if I, if I would wear it. 
and like never lose sight of that i think that'll always be an important thing to hold on to i think that's that like i think neck deep does that and yeah oh i agree i'll agree with that I, and I, I i think that's how you remain success like stay successful and keep getting bigger and they kill it and, and yeah i was just like i'm gonna do whatever i do is funny so on like the fifth day of posting tiktoks um i was with danny and i was like hey let's sing a song and like let me, let me tell the world this very embarrassing story that I don't have a job and that you fund my band because you believe in it. And like the next day I woke up and there was a, a good amount of views. My name is Emin and I'm fat and I also don't have a job. But for some reason she believes in me and I don't know why. I wrote the song and I released it and I couldn't have done it without her financial support and I want to show her that people like it too. It's called I Hope You're Happy and it's on Spotify. I guess now we're done, oh yeah, we're through. I've been selling skateboards, but he's building rockets to the moon. And I remember like the most people ever consecutively listening to my music was like 35 people. And then I woke up the next day and it was 1,100 people were listening to my music. And I, it was so weird. And I woke up and there was an email from uh, every label, you know, and it was, it was crazy. That's it, wild that that can happen nowadays. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. It, it just feels like it, it feels like it's the right time mm -hmm. because I feel like, like I said at the beginning, I have those depression waves. But I'm, right now, I feel like I'm not going to have one for a while. And right at the, the start, it started moving. And like I'm just gonna carry it, you know, and and I hope that made sense. But like it does, yeah. I don't know. It, it was the right time, and and the TikTok was the right time, and like now that I'm ready, that's when it happened, and it was. I think it, it it's good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm very excited, and yeah, and then Fueled by hit me up, and that was, exactly. That and was, what was it about Fueled by? I mean, I know with your musical past, that's a label you are very obviously familiar with. It's, yeah. a, it's an iconic name in the music world. And why was that the label out of all the ones that were reaching out to you? So it's funny, like one of my managers told me, he was like, hey, and this was like before I met my big manager and like stuff like that. When we were freaking 20, he was like, hey, we got to meet with this guy. His name is Johnny Minardi. I know Johnny. Yeah. And I didn't even know who that was, but I was like, cool. Like, we got to talk to Johnny Minardi. Um, and then, like, my manager started becoming friends with other managers, and everybody was like, you got to go with Fueled by. Like, that's the best record label. And, like, I don't know. It was just, it was right. And so my dad was in a band growing up, and a hardcore band, DIY touring band. And I knew. Hardcore band. That's sick. That yeah. was the music I used to play. Yeah, they were, they were cool. They were called Glass Eater. I met Johnny and I was like, <laughs> I, w I was going to say, this guy's my dad. No, this guy's like my dad. Like, he has I found out he was my dad. <laughs> it was weird. We did a 23 and me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was like, no, he has the, the same morals, the, the same mindset, like everything. And then I met Pete and Pete and my dad used to play shows together when they were kids. What? Yeah. What, did they, did, how, who, how does your, does your dad remember that? Did yeah. he tell you that? Yeah. Did you tell Pete that obviously? Yeah, Pete knows. That's so crazy. Did he remember who your dad was? Yes. What? They, they, that's happened a lot. Like Glass Eater, which is what my dad's band was called, was like a, a scene band. Mm -hmm. Like they, they did well. They were on Fearless. That's wild. That's yeah. That's blowing my mind. So it's awesome. On. And like throughout that whole thing, and this is what solidified my, I, my like idea and love for Feel by Ramen, I was like, if you're like me or like my dad or even know who my dad's band is, that just tells me, like, you're like me, mm -hmm. you know? And Johnny was like that. And my manager, Nano, was like that. And Pete Wentz was like that. And, like, it was just right. And Pete and Johnny, so Pete's record label, DCD2, and Johnny Feel Bio were like, let's do it together. Which is so, like, how wild is that? I saw that it was a double signing. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. what? Yeah, and I'm I'm like finding out that it's pretty cool. Like I, I I mean I know it's cool now. I found out a while ago that it was pretty cool because P hasn't like signed anybody in like five years. I know, especially with FBR, mm -hmm. um, because he did Panic and Gym Class Heroes and Fall Out Boy, and I think his last signing was Nothing Nowhere with with FBR, um, and yeah, now I'm I'm the next one, and I don't know. I love I I love the people that are helping me. 
They're mm-hmm. exactly like me. They understand my jokes and my vision, and I, I really like it. I hear that your next song, Saint Girlfriend, is about pooping your pants on a date and getting away with it. Yeah. So this is the next track that you're coming out with, right? In a couple of weeks. I, I read the the unspaced out font at the bottom of your yes. Instagram post. That's how I announce things. It took a long time for me to decipher it, yeah. you jerk. Yeah. But <laughs> it said, I think in three weeks, you're going to be releasing this song. Yep. Is it a true story song? It is a true story. Everything games you play is a true story. Oh, my goodness. I, Walk me through the story where you pooped your pants. So I write stories with my friends. And my, my main songwriting partner, his name is Max. He plays for Gail. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. And like, um, I don't know. We just get in the room. We have fun. And we talk about old stories and like. I'm always like, oh, do you remember that time you shit your pants on a date? You're having a nice conversation. Yeah, it's crazy. We should check out the game. We should do the. <laughs> hey, Max, remember when you shit your pants <laughs> yeah. on a date that we, one time? That's how we talk. We embarrass each other. It's I don't know. That's how we do it. And I'm I was, gonna write a song about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's write a song about it, and we did. And it's my favorite song. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite. Can I show you the chorus? Oh yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to do it. I'm sorry, Pete, if you're watching. Sorry, Nana, if you're watching. And I'll make sure that we do not cut this part out because this is an exclusive first listen. You're hearing it right now on a Nick Major interview with games we play on Adobe Radio. <laughs> but uh, if I have to cut it out, I can. No, no. I'll just I'll just show you the pre-chorus and a little bit of the chorus. It better be. I better hear about poop and pants. You and will. <laughs> you will. <laughs> ah, I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> okay. Hold the mic. Yeah. This is it. And then yeah, that's the song. And like, it, it, there's a love, there's a love part to it. See, and I love it because back to our Blink One Eighty Two conversations, they could write such catchy stuff that at times had such absurd stories and yeah. lyrics behind them. Yeah, and that's what that kind of reminds me of, which I, I love. Yeah, I, that's where I get it from, and that's my favorite thing, and that's what I want games you play to embody. Like Blink, when you look at their old videos, they were having fun, and they were with friends, and they were partying, and it was like. I don't know. I say partying. I'm not talking about like doing drugs. If I'm just being like going out and having a great time. You know what I haven't watched in a minute that we all need to sit down and watch are the Urethra Chronicles one and two. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen those in a couple years, and I used to watch. Yeah. I've, pr- I've probably seen them both over fifty times, <laughs> easily. Like I used to watch it like crazy. Yeah. But exactly, and in that you got to see the fun that those guys were having and the and all that stuff. Yeah, and and just like looping up the whole conversation, like that's what that's what. I realized that day I hung out with Mark, I was like, wow, like this band shaped not my band, but like who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. And like, that's like what made me enjoy listening to them and listening to music overall. It was just like fun, Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, I think that there's, um, I think that there's some room for fun bands right now. So like, I'm trying to, trying to fill that gap, you know? Why wouldn't you want to have fun? Doing yeah, it. like just doing stuff that you love, stuff you think's fun, funny, cool. Yeah, which it sounds like from merch to videos. Oh, because you did put out a new version of the music video for "Hope You're Happy." Yeah, which was so cool. I was like, oh, he got a budget now. Look at this video. It was fun. I guess now we're done. Oh yeah, we're through. I've been selling skateboards, but he's building rockets to the moon. Oh, I wish I was playing. He went to Notre Dame. That was rad. I did love the first video of it though. Yeah, and there was a spelling error right at the start of it. If, I don't know if that was I intentional made that or not. No. <laughs> I dropped out, dude. Yeah, so I'll sit here alone on my stupid broad boy throne. I hope you're happy. Don't think about me. Because that was the first thing I said to Tommy, which, by the way, when I brought you up to Tommy, I was like, we got to bring this kid in here. Because, uh, and actually, oh, speaking of Gail again, I guess that's when I saw, I saw you at Gail's show. Yes. Remember, I ran into yes. you at the Gale show, and yes. now it makes sense why you were there, because I'm guessing because of Max. My best friend, yeah. That's so crazy. Mm-hmm. But that was the first time I saw you since I was scrolling on TikTok one day, and I hope you're happy, mm-hmm. pulled up, rolled up, and I was just like, no way. Like, that is so sick. So you saw it on TikTok. Yeah. And that's, that's how awesome. that's how I it blew my mind. I was just like, good for this kid. That's fucking rad. So then I, I told Tommy, I was like, we got to bring this guy in here. And then I played your song, and then he... When the chorus hit, he started singing it because he knew the song. Really? And then so he was like, oh, and he said, he's like, oh, this is on, I put this on my Spotify list of like new songs that I love. So that's where I was just like, okay, it's making moves. That's so cool. I love when that happens. And like, it happens 
pretty a little more frequently now. And like I was on, I was hanging out with my friend Jaden. Oh, you interviewed Jaden Seely. Jaden. Oh, so you've met him now and you know him now. Yeah. Because when I saw you at the 420 yeah. so what thing, you were like, I want to meet him. Yeah. Like, I want to uh, like work with him or yeah, something. Yeah, he just like followed me on Instagram and I was like, Ooh. I'm so happy because when you said that, I was like, I need to introduce you guys then. Yeah. No, he's really nice. And we're going to hang out because he has a fiance and I'm married and we're going to hang out right when he comes back after tour. He has a dog named Frankenstein as well. I know. So he brought him <laughs> Very here funny dog. for our interview. Stein this is going to rival footage of the moon landing. <laughs> the two Frankensteins <laughs> meeting each other. Hi, Frankenstein. Really? Yeah. So we, the dogs met. But uh, that's great. I'm happy to hear because you mentioned that you liked his work. Yeah. And I think you guys could do some really cool stuff together. Yeah. And we were hanging out and we were on the San Atlantic bus. And somebody was like, I know your song. And I was like, hell yeah. That's awesome. Stand Atlantic. They were just in here for a session. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's rad. That's exciting when people in the music scene and the music world, when they're hearing the song. It's great. And like just random people. Like I was at the airport and I kind of blocked somebody in. It was, I was, I was being a bad driver and I got out of the car and some guy was honking and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's like, I fucking love your song. <laughs> and I was like, Dope. that is sick. Yeah. it was. It, that is cool. It, it was awesome. And I, we were, we were speaking about just having fun and, and pooping. Um, I mean, as one would. Typically speak about, and I'm gonna say this on stage every single night. Um, the my friend who plays guitar for me, Kyle, he's in the other room. Um, <laughs> my bathroom was occupied by my other friend who plays for me, Jake. So Kyle couldn't hold his poop. <laughs> I hear a song coming, <laughs> <laughs> another poop song, <laughs> and he shit in a bag outside. <laughs> In my bathroom. I mean, <laughs> I bet more people have been in that situation than would like to admit. Have Have you? I have. I've I've never done the back. I've pooped in the ocean, and that's weird because it floats back up and hits you. <laughs> it's chasing me. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah, that's You're exactly. Just what to swim away. It's like a shark coming out behind you. It's the fin. It was actually funny because I was. That would be a funny clip <laughs> in a music video. <laughs> Shitting in the water and just starts. <laughs> Floating up and chasing you. It grows a fin. <laughs> um, but it's a shit shark. It was funny because I was making fun of my I was making fun of my wife to my friends because she was she was in a band too. Yeah. Oh, we should talk about your wife. Yeah. Because she was in a band. Yeah, she was in a cool band. It w- they were called Cimarelli. Um, they like kind of like got started when YouTube music like when covers on YouTube were getting started, and I don't know. I w- we were all like making fun of each other, and I was like, Do you guys know one day when Danny was sixteen in Europe? She was too embarrassed to ask anybody to stop on the tour bus. So she just shit in a bag and didn't tell anybody. <laughs> and the next day, Kyle had that issue. It was so good. It's full circle. Yeah. I did I did mention to Tommy about your wife. And then he said that, what well, you went to a, a film school. And one of the professors there at one point did some sort of documentary. Yeah, um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah with, with, uh, with the band. Yeah, that happened. Well, so my wife left the band now. Yeah. Um, but as we were dating, like, before we got married, as we were dating, and while she was still in the band, like, a lot of stuff like that would happen. Kind of okay, it's not that, that special. Everyone's made documentaries <laughs> about that band, Tommy. No, Never mind. No, like, no, no, it's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, oh, I worked with Cimarelli. Oh, I love Cimarelli. Because Cimarelli, like, was huge for mm-hmm. a second. It was cool. Um, and, yeah, now she's doing her own thing. She actually just got her first, her first job. Oh, nice. It's and I can tell she loves and supports the hell out of you. Like, we, like uh, well, apparently much. financially, which I didn't know. Yeah. But also, but just like she, anymore. she just, yeah, that's right. Because we're signed to Field by Ramen with a guy named Peter. Yeah. But uh, I, I love to see that because you guys, she seems rad. I posted today. She's amazing. And I posted today. I was like, this, this girl believed in me and supported me when I wasn't even doing games we play. And like, I was depressed and I didn't get out of bed. And I, I at the end of my signing announcement i was like this is because of her Mm -hmm. i saw that and i don't know it 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 really is like she's she supports me too much she's also like my biggest critic which is great sometimes she's so mean to me about my music and about how (laughs) you're just crying in the corner (laughs) it sucked babe yeah we we were i was practicing and she was like "Eh, it's okay those were noises huh those were noises yeah i was did something i was so bummed but like on top of being a huge critic of me and like making me better she's uh also my biggest fan and was my previous record label and i wouldn't wouldn't be signed to feel by without her Mm -hmm. that's awesome i'm so happy to hear that because i I feel like that's just the kind of support and backbone that's great to come home to 
and great to have at your side. Yeah, and and the only thing that's weird now is so like I said, she was a YouTuber growing up. She's she's she has the job that everybody wants. She's a full time YouTuber, and as of lately, she's like, I don't want to do YouTube anymore. I've been doing it since I was ten. Doesn't do anything for me. So she got a job, a nine to five. She she it's a it's a badass job. She works like a barn. It's cool, but um now that she has a job. I'm like doing a lot of games, you play stuff solo, mm -hmm. you know, and like I'm going to usually she would be like right there. Mm -hmm. So it's new for me, but it's cool. It's 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 right. And it's like it's all it's all it's all going. Stuff is changing, but it, it's great. And you haven't have you had a chance yet to play live uh, as stuff's been popping off as stuff's been popping off? Absolutely not. Oh, that's got to be exciting because well, you're doing so what doing so what? Going on tour with the band Camino. Yeah, which that is insane because yeah. those boys are killing it. They're dude, they just play like five thousand people in Dallas. I know, and even out here they're selling out big venues and stuff. Yeah. And then also right before so what uh, I'm going on tour with I don't know if you've interviewed them, Point North. Have yeah. You, you have? Okay, cool. So um I'm going out with them doing like three shows and this other guy named Ryan Oaks. Yeah, he's been in here for sessions. Oh yeah? Yeah. Cool. And um yeah, I don't know. Those are my first shows with Point North. And Ryan Oaks at Valley Bar in Phoenix this Sunday. Pretty nervous. It's my this Sunday. first show since the pandemic. I've played hundreds of shows, but like I've gained a couple pounds. You got some you gained a couple fans. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. I gained a couple of everything. Uh -huh. You know? Um, so like in the worst way and in the best way. Um so I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah. It's like I think it's gonna be cool. Like for the first time ever, people are DMing me that I've never met before. Like, hey, I bought tickets to your show. That's never happened in my mm -hmm. life. So I'm excited. And your parents must be so stoked because your dad, music man himself. Yeah. What do they think about all this as it's unfolding, as you're meeting with Pete Wentz, you're writing with Mark Hoppus, you signed to Fueled By, you got shows coming up, tours. What's that yeah. been like for them? Because they've been, they let you drop out of school because you had a good band. <laughs> it wasn't, it was not good at all. <laughs> but, um, it's been awesome. My mom is really happy. And my dad, my dad growing up, and this is, I'm just being real. My dad was really hard on me about games you play. Cause like he, he was a band guy and it didn't fully work out. So he was like going crazy hard on me. Right. And like, I think the thing with my dad is he would be like, he's like really proud of me, but doesn't tell me, you know, with, with, with my dad, it's always this gotta get this better. This gotta get better, but this gotta get better. But then I see on his Facebook, and that used to hurt me a lot growing up, but like, um, I, I see was just bragging about you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I could see he's really proud of me, and like, I he tells people at my shows he's like that he's killing it, and he doesn't say that to me directly. Now he does a little more since I'm, since I've like he's like fine, you have a label, like yeah. yes, you're okay. Yeah, and um, I don't know, I, I he's really really happy, and he calls me to ask about stuff, and he also like. Sorry, Dad, if you're watching. Um, he like acts like he knows stuff, and he's like, before I sign, he's like, this label's probably gonna want this from you, and like, <laughs> he's no, been there, didn't. he's been in the world, not like, not that, and it was just funny that he acted like he was no, he was in the know, and that just showed me how much he cares, you know, like growing up doing games you play, like I said, I dropped out of high school for it. It was like, he he was hard on me, but. I am also where I am because of him, because of how much he supported me, how much he was like, you got to get better. And I, I did get better. And it, I don't know. It was good. It was a, it was weird growing up doing games you play like that, but, but, but now it's great. Now he's really happy. My mom is super happy. My wife is super happy. And I hope you're super happy. My, 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 let's say this. I hope you're happy. <laughs> um, I, I, I am extremely happy. Every single dream I have has has come true. Like, from when I was 15 and when I started dreaming about this band, like, I don't... Now it's, like, stuff I'm thinking about now. I don't have any more dreams to fulfill, you know? Mm -hmm. Now it's just kind of taking everything to the next level. Yeah. Which is exciting. And that's not, like, saying I made it. I'm just saying I made it in 15-year-old Emmons' brain. I have a way long way to go now. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I'm happy. And I, 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 I wish Danny didn't have a job because... Because sometimes I need help, but that's just me being selfish. I'm I'm very 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 happy. No, and you're gonna have a a team of help and support behind you like you've never had before. I feel like yeah, which is gonna be exciting yeah. and scary. Yeah, and my friends are out with me, and like 
That's that's really exci- exciting. I, I was a little worried about the, the mental health thing because I, I struggle with that like a lot. Yeah, um, especially during the pandemic. Yeah. I'm sure that really hit. It was horrible. <laughs> and um, I, it, it was good, though. It's what catapulted me into doing games to play for real. But um, I don't know. I, I, I was a little worried about going out on tour because for this long – about my mental health and I'm like, wait, but I have Jake and Kyle and like, it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And what, what's up in the pipeline? I know you got the new song coming out. Is there obviously going to be either an EP or a full album in the works? Are you just crunching down on it now? Or so I won't say what the EP name is because I had, I don't want to say it yet, but I will tell you poopy pants. (laughs) The the EP is about, and the title's about getting a job. And it's about, it's about how, when I, was going hard on games you play and Danny was supporting me like nobody really liked it Mm -hmm. you know so that's what the title track is that's what the EP is about and that comes out probably in July and I'm excited like somebody wrote a freaking bio about me and it was like major label debut EP and like I'm like damn this is legit I'm, I'm excited and yeah I don't know I think I think they're like the best songs I've ever written and not saying like they're objectively good I'm just saying I really like them um and yeah, it's it's about getting a job. I won't say the the words, but it's about getting a job. Cool. Get a job. That's the name of the new EP. <sighs> That's not. Damn. Maybe it is though. I don't know how to wink, so I'm just gonna double. I'm just wink. gonna blink very <laughs> intensely to convey yeah. it. And Who knows though? <laughs> no, yeah. but I I'm stoked for you, man. Like Thank from, you. From meeting you at Mel's place, yeah. on the front porch with this little puppy, yeah. to you heading back to Nashville and then coming back out here, like what a fun ride. Like, what a fun journey, and yeah. I'm so excited that, like, today, because today was the day that you officially announced mm-hmm. uh, the signing as mm-hmm. of this conversation, I just feel like it's the full-on beginning to a new chapter in games we play and into, hopefully, just your future. I'm really excited, and, and this this morning brought me a lot of joy, but oh, this, this is too, because, like, having this talk, I'm like, this is cool. And I'm glad that you were able to turn your passion into a job. It seems like that might be the way it's going. Not too bad. Yeah, except for the fact that I love spending money. But that's a total... Oh, man, I'm not the best at saving money either. Yeah. Especially when sh- sushi exists in the world. I just love buying food. I just, I do too. Yeah, I don't buy any clothes. I don't buy anything. I just like shoes. No, you I wear mean, this outfit food. every time I've seen you. Really? See, no, no. Oh, I don't, damn I don't it. think so. This is an outfit I wear all the time. <laughs> I, I think you've changed it up a little bit. Okay. But now I'm going to be taking note of that. You should. But, uh, dude, hell yeah. yeah. Cool stuff. I hope you get cool collabs as well. I know you were writing with Mark. No idea if he'll, if he'll pop up. Travis is playing drums on so much stuff lately that I hope you get to do something with Travis. Yeah, and get Tom DeLong in for the love of God. That, that would get be, on Tom. That would be a radar. dream. Oh. and also Olivia Rodrigo. That's like the number one. Oh, she's so good. I loved her album. Yeah, so much. Well, Sour was that the name of it? Yeah, I loved it. And I know because I, I saw on TikTok you covered a bunch of stuff and kind of pop punkified stuff. Yeah, and I think you did one of her tracks. Right? Yeah, I did good for you and Driver's License, and good for you did did pretty well. Oh, it was like my first. <laughs> that was today's interview. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the good for you thing uh, was like the first YouTube cover to ever do well, and yeah, I, I, I'm I'm excited. Well, good for you. You look happy and healthy, not me. If you ever care to ask, well, good for you. You're doing great. I'll do it without me, baby. Kind of wish I could do that. So- and I I want to do a collab with Livia Rodrigo, and Mark. Mm-hmm. And last one, Rivers Cuomo. Those are my three. Mark. Mark or Blink, um, Olivia Rodrigo, and Rivers. Well, dude. Maybe. You're on the path to make some cool stuff happen. Yeah. And I think today, like I just said, it's going to be the start of something cool. But also, you have to stop by here to do a session at some point. Yeah. And I want to see if I can hit up Shaggy, if they can come in tomorrow, if you guys are really free. Yeah. Um, Let, we'll we'll, t- we'll talk about it right after this ends. Yeah. yeah. Quick update. So Shaggy, the name that you heard, he is our audio guy for when bands come here and perform. He was available. The band were available. So they stopped by the following day, did a live set for us. So check it out. Yes, by the way, I am wearing the same shirt. It, it just happens to be, I wore it again today. It is clean. But check this out. So I'll sit here alone on my stupid purple throne. I hope you're happy. Don't think about me. Also, if I get one of those collabs, I gotta come back on and see like how how we're both doing. Yeah, and bring you know? Mark with you, or or Olivia or Rivers. Yeah.
It's just a song with all of them. Yeah. And oh, just, that'd be great. That would be. Now that would be a hit. Yeah. But dude, <laughs> congrats on it all. I, I know there's been ups, there's been downs, but I think you're at an exciting moment in your career right now. And I think you what your first show with the new stuff is coming up on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see how that goes. Yeah. So what's going to be awesome. You got Point North, I guess that's on Sunday, right? Yeah. And then Band Camino. So you got, you got some good stuff happening, yeah. dude. And you deserve it because from what I can tell, you're a nice guy. I'm not. I All right. should really should cut guy. the interview. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're out. <laughs> and anything else you wanted to cover? You feel like we covered uh, plenty of ground for a uh, for a conversation? Yeah, I mean this was really short. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually my longest interview now. <laughs> Let me see how long have we been going. So we've been going for forty eight minutes. You're gonna make me edit this thing. I'm sorry, but uh, no. Uh, other than that, I nothing. think that'll cover it, dude. Yeah. I'm so stoked, so happy, so proud. I was pumped to see when you popped up on my TikTok. Yeah, keep killing it, mm. you, bro. Frankie, look, Frankie, say bye. Okay, Frankie, here's your cake. Oh, <laughs> and cut. I think we're good. I think we're good to cut. <laughs> cool. Good shit. Thank you. I enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, me too. I really did. Yeah.